All right, let's move on to the next topic of conversation. Still more Fire Emblem, but not necessarily three houses. Uh, what we're gonna talk about is our Fire Emblem story. So essentially what we've been... Aside from Fire Emblem Three's houses, what is our story with the franchise? What have we been doing? What have we played in the past? Uh, what are some of the titles that we say, oh, this is the title that actually I define as my favorite Fire Emblem game or close to a uh, or my favorite. Um, some, of me some of the mechanics have gotten better or worse over time, stuff like that. So, Matt, want to get us started? Oh boy, okay. So, <clears throat> I think the first Fire Emblem game I was aware of was uh, the GameCube one, Path of Radiance, which okay. I didn't get, but that's sort of when, like, they had been in Smash Bros. for a while then, and hmm. I think I saw it in, like, Nintendo Power or something, and that was the first game I was sort of aware of. So I didn't end up getting that, but I got the sequel, Radiant Dawn, for the Wii as my first Fire Emblem game. Oh yeah? Which is, I later learned, is a terrible first game to start <laughs> with, because not only is it a sequel to a pretty lore-heavy story... Okay, so you have but, no idea what was going on. <laughs> but it's also one of the harder games. So mm. that's why I got destroyed even on easy. But at, 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 at the very least, it got you ready for the hard. Like if you can conquer the hardest thing. I mm. actually I didn't realize this at the time though, because I enjoyed Radiant Dawn a lot, and it's uh -huh. still one of my favorites in the series. I think that the first half of Radiant Dawn is pretty much perfect. Ooh, first like half it, though. Yeah. Well, mm. apart from the. One big issue that kind of permeates the whole thing is that there are no, there aren't really any supports in this game. Okay. There were plans to have supports, but there was like a hundred characters in this game, and it was just too much. So they ended up getting cut. Instead, okay. you get base conversations, which are just sort of set conversations between certain characters that you get between maps, mm -hmm. which are nice, but it's not quite the same. They're not quite as in depth, but. From like a story, a map, and a gameplay standpoint, I think the first two parts of this game are amazing. Oh. Um, and then Ike comes into the story, and <laughs> everything gets worse. Oh, it's just because of Ike. Oh gosh, I, I forgot that you had the certain dislike to Ike. I, I do not like Ike in this game. I've heard he's better in the first game, which mm -hmm. makes sense because that's kind of where he has his story. Okay. Um, in here, it kind of feels like he's the main character just because he was the main character of the last game. Okay. He doesn't really have anything going on. He doesn't have an arc to go through. He's like, he finished his arc. He did that in the first game. Now he's just a stoic, kind of serious guy. He's part of this war because someone's paying him to be there, which isn't a very compelling motivation. I got mercenary pretty much. He never really gets challenged because he's already like super strong and everyone already thinks he's the greatest and there's a lot more interesting stories kind of going on in the background that kind of get pushed to the side just oh, yeah. so we can see more Ike and it bothers me. <laughs> I think I guess it because it was one of the most prominent characters from the previous yeah, from the yeah, prequel. And I, that's clearly why they did it, but I feel like that was the wrong move. Okay. So then, yeah, the story kind of suffers, I feel, because of that. And then uh, the maps, the map design is still pretty good, but Ike's group is just so powerful that there's like no challenge anymore. Mm. And then there's a few parts where you have to switch back to the group you were playing as for the first part, and they're so much weaker. <laughs> so the game just difficulty spikes drastically for these chapters. Oh gosh. Um, it's still it's still not the worst, but it's enough of a downer on it that I can't really say this is definitively my favorite. Okay, all right. Anyway, overall, I still enjoyed this a lot. So the next game I got was the next game that released, which was uh, Shadow Dragon on the DS, which was a remake of the first game, and I do not like Shadow Dragon one bit. Oh, really? Even though it has Marth? I don't. <laughs> so Shadow Dragon also has no support. It also has okay. characters mm -hmm. who never speak, period. They just kind of show up and join. The story in general is very light. It's very dull, for lack of a better word. Oh. Gameplay is very simple. Map designs are very simple. 
it's just it's so boring. Oh <laughs> I found gosh. it utterly boring. But that's a remake so, of the first one, right? Like a yeah, like yeah. okay. And I feel like that's really the problem is they didn't do enough to really modernize it. Mm -hmm. And apparently the next sequel to that, which only came out in Japan, did a better job, but I never played it. Anyway, so at that point I was kinda like, oh, I wonder if I really like Fire Emblem after all. And then Awakening came out, Awakening. I got that, I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think its flaws are probably more apparent to me now, but the at the first time. time I played, I, I really, yeah. really enjoyed it. And Awakening was like one of the main, the, I believe the, the, the breaking point when this series started becoming oh, yeah. like oh, popular. Sure. Awakening is a super important title for this series in general. It's mm -hmm. like the best selling Fire Emblem before that had been just shy of a million copies and then Awakening sold over two million. Yeah, so there you go. So it so, was a big boon yeah. for the franchise. Uh, it finally fixed the support system. Mm -hmm. The support system you see in Fates is, was sort of created by Awakening. Previously, to get supports, instead of fighting next to each other, you had to like stand next to each other okay. for a whole bunch of turns. So what this would devolve into is at the end of a map, before you beat the boss or capture the last point, you just have your characters standing next to each other and you just end turn over and over and over again to build up the support meter. Oh gosh. And then the other issue is that characters were only able to get five support conversations per playthrough. Oh. So you can get like C, B, and A for one character and then you only have two more supports so you can't actually complete any other support conversations for that entire playthrough for that character. Alright, so basically the series has evolved over time on that aspect at least. Yeah, yeah, and I only realized that it was that bad because uh, I went back and started trying some of the older games. So I played <laughs> Sacred Stones, which is Fire Emblem 8, which was the third of the three GBA games because it came with the 3DS ambassador program or whatever. Okay. That one was okay. It's fine. <laughs> I wasn't super impressed with it, but it wasn't Shadow Dragon, so... Mm, okay, yeah, okay. That's good. <laughs> a little bit better. Yeah, then I think Fates was probably next for me, and mm -hmm. I sort of mentioned with Fates, the story was just too rough that <sighs> I couldn't really... It sort of hampered the whole thing down. I, did, I do think I enjoyed roughly the first half of Birthright, because mm -hmm. the maps were decent. Okay. And I think that Fate's gameplay system is pretty good. Mm -hmm. For sure. And the supports are all... There's some decent characters in there as well. Mm -hmm. There's highs and lows, really. Yeah. But then the second half of Birthright, I was oh, gosh. not I enjoying it as much. Yeah. The maps took longer. They weren't as well designed. And the story was just really grating on me at that point. I kind of lost all hope that it was ever going to get good. Yeah. Especially after I killed Saiso. There was no hope. <laughs> So then um, I played Conquest after that, and I do think Conquest is the better game just because it has really good map design. Uh, you have more variety of objectives, like you'll have maps where you have to defend a place okay. rather than killing guys, and you'll have different sorts of things to interact with in the map. More objective driven then. Yeah, yeah. More interesting map design all around, so that was quite good. The story is still terrible, but... I honestly enjoy it a bit more just because it's... Birthright was like boring terrible. Okay. Whereas Conquest was sort of like so bad I can enjoy just how awful it is. Like so bad it's a bit awful. It's, it's okay, it's, it's like what going to the theaters and watching a bad movie that you know yeah. is bad but you enjoy it because it's bad. It's, like you look at Birthright and the main story objective is just let's go to the bad place and kill Garen. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Conquest, it's oh, I we we know we have to kill Garen, but I our, my siblings aren't gonna want to do that. Yeah. So we need to conquer Hoshido so that we can get Garen to sit on the Hoshido throne, and then everyone will see that he's actually a goo monster, and then my siblings will help me kill him. Yeah. So we need to <laughs> conquer this entire other nation. Just so that we can uh, expose our king <laughs> and, as uh, a bad guy. Yeah. Oh gosh! No, sorry. It's that for the, for the audio listeners, I'm just shaking my head all this freaking time. It's, it's just oh gosh. And then I tried Revelations and I never beat it because it was awful. <laughs> you never beat it, so you never even finished it. I thought you would. 
No, it was really bad. Like okay. the maps were super like I guess you could say they were also varied, but it was in a very gimmicky way and I just did I was not having a good time mm. at all. And the story was still awful. Yeah. And I still had a bad taste in my mouth from Conquest having the exact same ending as Birthright, <laughs> but the characters switched out. Yeah. So that annoyed me. Uh I did go back and play Fire Emblem 7 after that, which was the first game that we ever got in the West. Okay. The second of the GBA games. Hmm. And I was sort of expecting it to be about on par with Fire Emblem 8, but I was actually really pleasantly surprised by Fire Emblem 7. I think it... Even with the support system? Have my favorite cast Ooh. of any game that I've played. Okay. Of it's any like game or Fire Emblem? Any Fire Emblem game, Okay, so. okay, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, like, wow, that's a... That's a big day like right The support there. system was still borked, uh, and there was some weird, not-so-great maps. Mm. But, like, what I ended up doing was just basically reading all the supports online. But the fact that I was willing to do that kind of goes to show that I was really enjoying this cast a That's lot awesome. more than I thought I would. And yeah, the story was pretty decent. Overall, it was a... Uh, quite good experience. I think that's another one of my favorites, along with Radiant Dawn and probably Awakening as well. Ooh. I think those are probably my three. And then I played a little bit of Six, which is Roy's game, which never came out in America. I was playing a translation. And it translation? was... Translation? Yeah, like a fan translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Roy is not a terrible protagonist, so... I've been telling you since the day... I saw Roy in Melee, I've been telling you, and you never believe me. It's not for the reason I thought it would be though, like he's a very weak unit, but that's also kind of the point, is he's like this, like he's a lord, he's a noble, so yeah. he basically needs protection, and you have to kind of drag him through these maps, because every objective is always to get Roy to the end. <laughs> but it's kind of an interesting, from a gameplay standpoint, and also... Okay. From his like supports, you kind of realize Roy's a bit of a nerd, which I wasn't really. Wait, what do you mean by that? Like he's he's a very uh, studious, like bookish kid. His whole mm -hmm. thing is like he's really well read and well studied. He's very good with his studies. Oh, he's well spoken like, too. Uh, important character in the game. Uh. Yeah. Uh. So that was kind of. I have... was nice. The game as a whole was good. I think I liked it better than 8, even though I haven't finished it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pretty, yeah, I'd say that's like pretty average Fire Emblem Roy's game, and that's it for me. Well, I guess I played Heroes as well, but I won't talk about that. <laughs> I have no too idea. many mixed feelings about that game. <laughs> I mean, you're, and you're still playing it because if you if you got I'm the still three, playing it and I hate myself for oh it. Oh my gosh! But I'm okay. Not spending money on it, so. Okay, that's... okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Ah, uh, okay. That story, that story is way more involved than my story. Yeah, uh, my, mine is gonna be like two seconds long. Uh, my story started with Awakening when the branches actually started becoming popular. I didn't even know. Well, I kind of knew about Fire Emblem just because of the uh, Smash Brothers. Yeah, that's how everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody knew, but I had no idea what they were before, and I really like Roy. I don't know why I couldn't I couldn't tell you how I like developed right relationship. I guess he screamed very loud. <laughs> I tend to like very like screaming characters, Daisy, for example. Um, but yeah, I started with Awakening. I started getting into the franchise. I thought again the, the premise and the story looked really cool. It I kind of fell off afterwards. I didn't get the battle system that much. I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. Uh, so when I was playing the game and I kept getting beaten, I was I I, I also it's because I, I I was uh I was mostly I was bad at the game and second of all since I I went on classic mode where I mean if you if one of your units die every like it dies forever it's permadeath yeah. and for me I, I wanted to do it because okay that's the, that's a fire emblem style. I'm not gonna play like a CC and not have the other <laughs> thing but every single time that my unit died. It made me sad, so I had to restart this the, the the whatever chapter I was playing, and that kept going and over. And then I remember the last one that I did took 40 minutes to get to one point, and then I didn't know that I left one of my support characters, like my healers, exposed. <laughs> and in one turn, everybody, every single unit from the enemy went and attacked that unit and killed it. And I was like, okay, I'm done. No, not doing this anymore. I kind of so, left it up. 
just just very brief uh, interjection here. Mm -hmm. In three houses, there's a thing they added where you can see what the enemies are going to attack, which unit. They'll Ooh. have like a little red line from them to whichever one of your units is currently going to be their target on their next move. Ah. So that should probably help you out in that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, and then I play Birthright. Uh, well, f again, Fire Emblem Fates. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I chose the Birthright. I didn't play Conquests or Revelations. Yeah. We should say Birthright was supposed to be the. Uh, they sort of pitched it as the more casual, easier yeah, exactly. path, whereas Conquest was the one for more long-term fans. Yeah, and that essentially took me six years to beat, or something like that, and yeah, not because I was really playing. Into it. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Right oh yeah. But it happened. But then again, the same thing happened. A uh, uh, unit died. Yeah. I didn't I didn't do the, the saving correctly, so that unit was dead, and I was like halfway through the story, so I kind of, at, at that point I kind of fell off. And then I picked it back up because I'm like, okay, I, I want to see how the story actually turns out, because it was going, oh. it was going all right at the, by the time that I quit. Right. So... It still had potential. It still had potential. I was like, oh, I want to know what the story was. I played like two more story missions, I saw where it was going, I was like, nope. No, nope, not my thing. I kind of left it off. It took me being sick and not having any other games close by because I didn't want to get off my bed <laughs> to me to, for me to actually finish the game. Was it worth it? No. <laughs> Probably would have been worth it just to what, like read a book or something. More productive time. Oh, you weren't you weren't so touched by Xander's death. No. When he says, "Oh, I had, I never had a choice. I couldn't go against my father, even though he does in the other two paths." So, so no. much for that. Yeah, so much. So I said, "So yeah, that's that's my Fire Emblem story." Not very. Not, that's why I'm so excited about this one. Yeah, soon to be extended. Soon to be extended, which so, is awesome. I forgot to mention Shadows of Valentia. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember oh, all right. the Fire Emblems. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Shadows of Valentia was pretty cool. I had a Pretty decent story, very good presentation. Uh, gameplay was bad, but in kind of a funny way because it, it is also a remake of an NES game and they kind of left in all the nonsense from that game. Yeah, yeah. So there's a sort of novelty in just experiencing all this bad game, game design in this really nice, shiny, like impressive looking package. Yeah. Uh, better than Fates. I'll leave it at that. That's uh, that's the step of approval. We should like uh, rank some of the the, the the Fire Emblem games. Well, with yeah, you we at some point. At some point. Yeah.